In this tutorial, we're going to look at collision shapes. So as usual, I'm going to start with a fresh scene. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a floor object and a cube. I'm just going to scale the Y and make it um, 60 centimeters along Y. And then I'm going to move this up Y 30 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to make this editable and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to right click and choose extrude inner. And then I'm going to extrude this face inwards. And then I'm going to choose extrude and just extrude it down slightly. So it's basically a square with a hole in the middle. Next, I'm going to create a sphere. Just going to adjust the radius. I'm just going to leave this as a parametric object. And I'm going to give these all rigid body tags now. So the floor, I'm going to go to tags, simulation tags, rigid body. I've also snapped this shortcut to my toolbar. So I can just click here for a quick simulation tags. So I'm just going to play this back. And you'll notice that for some reason the sphere is not entering the hole in the cube. It's kind of floating on the surface, which is quite strange. And this is to do with collision shapes. So as you remember in the previous tutorial, if we go to Edit Project Settings, Dynamics, Visualization, I'm going to enable this. And I'm going to have a look at the collision shapes. And you'll notice that the collision shape for the cube with the hole in it is just a simple cube. So this is why this is happening. So if I just click on the tag for the cube and go to shape and instead of automatic, I'm going to use static mesh, play the scene back. And we can see the uh, collision geometry has changed. It's a lot more complicated and it looks like it's using the same shape as the geometry. And now we're getting an accurate simulation. So that's just something to watch out for. Usually automatic works 90% of the time, but uh, now and then you'll have to use static mesh or moving mesh. So next I'm going to demonstrate moving mesh. I'm just going to get rid of the cube and the sphere. I'm going to create another sphere. Just drop it down and I'm going to give it a tag, dynamics tag. I'm going to make this, uh, I'm going to turn dynamic off so it's a static mesh basically. Next, I'm going to create a cube. Um, I'm just going to make these bits here 50 by 50. I'm going to move it up. I'm actually just going to increase the width to 100 by 100. I'm going to add some segments along. X, maybe seven. Uh, I'm going to make this editable. I'm going to use loop selection. I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to use loop selection, which is really cool. So I'm just going to select all these loops in the middle. I'm going to hit T for scale. And I'm just going to scale this midsection down and adjust it like this we get this kind of weird shading. If you want to solve that, we can go to the Fong tag on the cube and set it to zero. So now we just get a faceted kind of look. So I'm just going to add a dynamics tag to this. So I'm going to play this back. And for some reason it's collided, but it's hovering above the sphere. So this looks quite strange. So we've basically got the same problem again, which is um, the collision mesh is probably just the cube. So let's have a look at it. Visualization, enable, and indeed it's basically just the cube. So the simulation is not accurate in this case. 
solve this, we're going to go to the rigid body tag of the cube. And we can't use static mesh this time because it's moving and we want it to move. So static mesh is uh, out of the question. Instead, we're going to use shape moving mesh. So now with moving mesh selected, I'm going to play this back. And that looks a lot more accurate. We can see that the collision mesh is uh, using the original geometry pretty much. So I'm just going to turn off visualization. And I'm just going to put my cube to the side a bit. Play back the simulation. And that's the result I'm looking for, basically. Basically, just keep an eye on that uh, automatic collision shape because it can be quite inaccurate sometimes. So if you found this useful, please share it. And thanks for watching.